go. Good morning, church. I greet you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a lovely and magnificent day it is. Some may say that it's gloomy. Some may say it's bright. Some may say it's cloudy. Whatever the case may be, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we should rejoice because it didn't have to be that way. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And here we are yet in the house of the Lord yet another day. So, Lord, I, I, I want to thank you all. I want to thank the Lord for uh, giving me this opportunity. I want to thank Pastor Robinson for this opportunity. I just want to thank all of you for coming out and being with us today. Yes, we're still celebrating our annual men's season and uh, godly men emboldened when the, they embrace the spirit of Christ. What a word, what a way to look at things when men are, in, are seeking boldness can do extraordinary things. And I think I want to talk to you about that a little bit later. These godly men can do just about anything. Even when they come and pray on one accord, don't you know in the book of Acts they talk about how the men got together, how the people got together in, this, uh, in their room and they started to pray and they shook the very foundation of the house. Well, what we're trying to do now is we got this global outreach ministry, this global prayer outreach ministry. And the whole objective is that if godly people come together and pray, you can shake the world, bring about changes, bring about reform. Bring revival everywhere in this world because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Well, God said I, he gave his son for the world. Well, the world is composed, uh, is composed of many, many people from all over. In Asia, in Africa, in South Africa, in, in Russia, in, in, in Iran, in, in India. What we need to understand is that he loved us all. He loves sinners and he loves those who are not sinners. He loves the saints and sinners. I tell you, he loves them everybody. And he gives us an opportunity that through prayer, somebody might hear a word. Somebody might be revived. Somebody's situation might change. Because if you pray continuously, something is going to happen. So pray until something happens. This is what it's all about. And I just want to thank you for that opportunity to let you know that we're about praying. We don't, don't worry about what it looks like. It's not about form or fashion. It's about lifting up the name that's above every name, that in the name of Jesus, all things are possible through him who strengthens you. Also, I want to make some other announcement that um, for the Quinn Chapel family, it says that um, the communion Sunday will not be happening this Sunday, but it'll be on the second Sunday in September instead of the first. It will be September 11th instead of September uh, instead of the first Sunday. Then the third Sunday is going to be September 18th and that's our homecoming Sunday. Usually we, we're requesting 50 or 100 dollars but let not the minimum be your maximum. <coughs> Additional information is that we need you to register today if you're going to the restaurant for the celebration of our, uh, our dear brother, Reverend and Mrs. Meredith Hudson, uh, Ministerial Retirement. It's, the banquet's gonna be held up at the Mountain Gate Valley, uh, Mountain Gate Family Restaurant in Thurmont. Celebration time starts at 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Love gifts and cards for them are appropriate. Another announcement is that on Wednesday, Bible study will be uh, uh, in the book of Exodus, chapter 7 and 8. Come on and join us. The information, the phone numbers will be at the conclusion of this recording. You'll find that information. If there's any questions, call the office. We have Bible study on Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. and at 7.30 p.m. Come one, come all. And today on Saturday morning, prayer time from 10 a.m. until conclusion for about one hour. We have a phone number that you reach because you can get, take advantage of be a part of our prayer line. So there are so many things going on at this church right now and we're just so grateful that God has, has used us in a mighty way so that others may see and, and join us and join in with us in worshiping. 
Sunday school lessons uh, will be also held on at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Um, join us by all means. Like I said, the phone numbers are in the bulletin, and also you can call the church for further information, and also at the end of this recording. The day I want you to understand that as you get your Bibles open and go to uh, Acts chapter 8. Today the uh, story is going to come from um, a, a story about how a man who was, a godly man who was empowered by the Holy Spirit was able to go out and do some extraordinary things in the ministry of evangelism. <clears throat> I want you to know that this man's name is Philip and we're going to talk about him today. Um, there's a lot of things that's happened in the book of Acts. It shows about how the development of the church comes about. Excuse me. It opens up with the fact that Saul was consenting uh, to the death of Stephen. And after his death, uh, there was a movement established by Saul. And Saul was persecuting the church. And during that persecution, it, there was a movement also that took, a secondary movement that took place where the word, the gospel was being spread while the apostles were staying in Jerusalem. Others were fleeing Jerusalem to escape persecution. But as they were escaping, they went out into the other parts of the world, Samaria, uh, into other parts uh, 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 of, of the country and other world to spread the news, the good news. Salvation is available to all through that name, Jesus the Christ. And so, as we look to Acts chapter verse, uh, chapter 8, starting with verse 26, we find this young, uh, this young man who from uh, chapter 6 was called to deal with the widowers at the time to take care of the material needs. The verse starts off with... Uh, 26, and let me move this out the way so I can get a clear picture and, and read it from the New King James Version so you can know what's going on. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, this, this desert. In case you didn't get that, that's Acts chapter 8, starting with verse 26 through 40. 27 says, So he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his shearers to silence. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch Answer Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 
So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized them. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus, Azotus and passing through, he preached in all the cities until he came to Caesarea. The word of God for the children of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearers of his word. Today's subject I want to talk to you about is men emboldened can do extraordinary, extraordinary things. Men emboldened. Bold men <laughs> can do extraordinary things. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. We lift your name up. For you are our Lord, the Lord, and the King of Kings. It's you, O oh Father God, that we are, are here today. The reason why we're here today is because of you. Because of your plan, O oh Father God, and not because of our understanding of what we want to do. So Lord, have your way with us today. Have your way that you open up the eyes of our hearts, that we may hear your word and your teaching, O oh Father God. Speak to us plain and full, O oh Father God, that we may know that it was you that was speaking and not this person who's before you now. So as I decrease, O oh Father God, you increase. Allow your Holy Spirit to move and, and discern over your word that we may hear something from you today. That it be applicable to our walk applicable to our life. That you get all the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I just want to let you know that I was moved by this word here and it, and it's cap it, it encapsulates a lot of the things that are going on in the world and how we look at things and how we look at life. I want to lift up these two verses to you, so or three verses, so that you have to understand what the background is. Or what, when I go into the background, you'll see what's going on. Now, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is, sterile. This is desert. This is a desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. See, in the midst of a powerful outworking of God's spirit in Samaria, Philip was told to depart and go to Gaza. He was preaching up a storm up there. He was saving, casting out demons and saving those. And, and they were renewed and restrengthened and, and, and everything that you could possibly do. Philip was doing a fantastic job of evangelizing up in Samaria. He brought a lot of folks to Christ. And now, all of a sudden, he hears this voice uh, 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 that comes to him. Philip, a man filled with the spirit and wisdom, who was responsible for the material needs of the church, by the time we see him here, he has become a preacher of the gospel. Persecution has struck uh, the church in Jerusalem. People fled and so did Philip. And he went down to Samaria. God used this as ordinary devoted man to do extraordinary things and the people there were receptive to the Lord and his message. Many were saved. God's power was evident. But in the midst of this powerful outworking of God's spirit in Samaria, Philip was told by an angel to, to depart and go to Gaza, this desert place, this barren land, this desert place, in other words, it was uninhabited. God took Philip from the abundance of fruitfulness and placed him where no one lived. And as the story unfolds, God's plan becomes a little more clearer. A prominent Ethiopian official is headed back home after 
time of searching for the truth in Jerusalem. The Ethiopia is where well, Ethiopia was located in Africa, south of Egypt. The unit was obviously very dis dedicated to God because he had traveled such a long distance to worship in Jerusalem. This man may have been a Gentile convert to Judaism because he was in charge of treasury of Ethiopia. This man's conversion brought Christianity into the power structure of another government. This is the beginning of the witness to the ends of the earth. In his chariot, he was reading the book of Isaiah, but without any understanding of the text. With split-second timing, the Spirit directed Philip to overtake this chariot. Philip opened the conversation with a friendly question. Do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch readily admits his need of someone to guide him, to instruct him, to make plain the scripture and invites Philip to sit with him in the chariot. An opportunity was presented to Philip to explain the gospel. I wonder sometimes opportunities are, uh, are, are given to us that we may explain the gospel. So Philip followed the Spirit's leading. He began the discussion from where the man was, immersed in the uh, prophecy of Isaiah, and then three, he explained how Jesus Christ fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy. Godly men, when you share the gospel, start where the other person's concerns are focused. Don't try to start from the very beginning. Just meet them right where they are. When we have trouble understanding the Bible, we should ask others to help us. We must never let our insecurity or our pride Get in the way of understanding God's word. Understanding that Philip led this man to faith in Jesus Christ by using the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is found in the pages of both the Old and the New. God's every word is relevant today and is applicable to all people in all age groups. Do not avoid or neglect the use of the Old Testament. It too is God's word. When Philip saw him, he asked if he could teach the man. The passage that this Ethiopian happens to be reading happens to be Isaiah chapter 53. The suffering of the Messiah. The passage is Isaiah's picture of the one, uh, is the picture of the one who was meek and silent before his enemies. The one who was hurried away from justice in a fair trial. And the one who had no hope of posterity because he was killed in the prime of his manhood while unmarried. The eunuch brought and wonder, thought and wondered whether Isaiah was speaking of himself or of some other man. Uh, this gave Philip the desired opportunity to tell how these scriptures was perfectly fulfilled in the life and death of Jesus of Nazareth. No doubt while he was in Jerusalem, the Ethiopian had heard reports about a man named Jesus. Oh, but these reports would, of course, have cast him in an unfavorable light. Now the eunuch learned that Jesus of Nazareth is the suffering servant of Jehovah of whom Isaiah wrote. It seems that Philip had explained to the Ethiopian the privileges of Christian baptism, identifying oneself with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, as they near the body of water, the eunuch signified his desire to be baptized and stopped his chariot. Baptism was the sign of an identification with Christ and with the Christian community. And even though there was no witnesses, Besides Philip, it was still important for the eunuch to take this final step. Now, verse 37 is only found in King James and the New King James Version. It is omitted in other translations, but it's found also in the Western text and including the uh, Latin tradition. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And both Philip and Eunuch 
and the eunuch went down into the water that the uh, baptism was by immersion. And as soon as the baptism was over, the spirit of the Lord caught and pulled Philip away. This appears to be excuse me. This appears to be uh, that it was no mere uh, 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 coincidence, but a guidance and a, a movement to another location. See, Philip was being moved around. He was going to different places to evangelize. But also, this method of him be, being moved speaks of a miraculous and a sudden removal with the purpose that the eunuch would not become occupied with the human instrument of his conversion. Both with the Lord and himself. See, here's the thing. He didn't want to get tied up in Philip. So Philip had to be removed and taken somewhere else so that he could focus on the Lord himself. The eunuch went on his way rejoicing. Uh, there, there should be a, a joy that, that comes from obedience to the Lord that surprises all other pleasurable emotions. Now, that is a recap of the story. That's what took place. And as we look at the story as it developed and so forth, we can find that why, are, why did he have to go to a desert place? Why couldn't he met him somewhere else down the road? But God's way of plan is not our plan. God defies our human logic. He goes against the grain. How can we understand from our finite perspective uh, deal with the infinite perspective, one that is eternal, one that is everlasting. How can we even phantom to understand what time it is or where time goes when we don't have control over time, where he goes past time and all through time and time is irrelevant to him. Sometimes God has something for us in a desert place, some place where it's devoted, uh, devoid of anything, that therefore we can Focus on him instead of on anything else that our minds might be telling us. Too often we feel uh, led out only when times are bad. But what about when the times are good? Philip allowed God to direct his life in ways which defies the human views of things. Oh, it was good and plenty while he was there. Why not stay there? Well, God said, well, you wouldn't go nowhere, so let me take you somewhere because it was if it was a bad time, we always wobble in the bad time. We always got something to say. And when things start getting better, then we forget God. One of the other things that we do is, as God remains, and this another point that comes up to mind, is that the Ethiopian man was a eunuch, a servant of Queen Candace. He had gone to Jerusalem for something, perhaps to experience God. But he returned empty-handed. So what he did was he, he knew he had to find, now he had not found what he was looking for, so he read the scrolls of Isaiah. He immersed himself in the word of God and then allowed the Holy Spirit and God to move in such a fashion and way to bring him some understanding. As he read, his heart longed to know the God who wrote it. People like this in Ethiopians exist even today. They are alone reading the Bible in search of deeper and more meaningful uh, life and they are, are yet unfulfilled and God by his spirit is ready to speak to them. Don't you know, don't you know, when you read the word of God, there is a message for you. There is something that's going to come out of it. When we immerse ourselves in the word and study it, God always sends somebody. God always reveals himself through somebody. It don't matter who it is, but therefore when you open yourself up to want to fellowship with someone else, don't hold back. Open up and let have this conversation about what's going on in the scripture. I don't know everything, but I do know somebody who knows more than I know that I can be able to sit down and talk to them. And that's the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for throwing the Holy Spirit in there because the Holy Spirit gives discernment of all his knowledge. But God also brings people into your life to help you work through it. So be careful who you talk to and who you discuss the work because it's the scripture that discerns all things that gives you the insight that you need to have. 
the Ethiopian was reading, but he had no understanding of what he was reading. So he needed someone to be able to interpret, to, to, to guide him through, to point out what it is in this message that really matters and so forth. So listen to your pastors, your leaders, your evangelists, and listen to those who are studying the word continuously so that they be able to lead you and guide you. That's why you have a Bible study. That's why you come to church and listen to the word of God so you can learn it and, and grab a hold of something. But this is not about entertainment. It's about growing in Christ. Scriptures. If you read them, ask for help if you don't understand. Pray that someone, that God will reveal himself through the scripture. Pray that if you don't still don't understand, God will bring someone into the fold so that you'll be able to learn and understand. And they, they'll be able to help you work through that scripture to understand what it means. Another thing that Philip, another point that I want to point out. Philip was told to go to the desert by an angel. Once there, the Spirit said to Philip, go over and join, that, join this chariot. We don't know how the Spirit spoke to Philip, but we do know the Spirit lived inside of him. Perhaps he experienced a simple inner prompting, a clear and precise word that he was to overtake the vehicle. He knew the spirit was speaking to him, so he went. Believers today, in obeying the promptness of the prompting of the spirit, one must be able to bring clarity, insight, must have clarity and insight. Huh? When the spirit is speaking to you in truth. See, Philip listened to the spirit, and this man was saved. Sometimes we don't want to, we hear what we want to hear. Listen to what we want to listen to. Turn off what we don't want to, you know what I'm talking about. We know that we have this propensity to let it go in one ear and out the other. God is trying to talk to us today. He's trying to whisper something into our ears. But we have too much noise going on in our heads that we don't have time we don't have, we have not went to a quiet place where he can minister to us and talk to us and tell us what we really know. Sometimes it gets so obscure that we know that there's a battle going on because Satan don't want you to know any of this stuff. He don't want you to have a right relationship. He interrupts your prayers. He interrupts your readings. He finds ways to distract you. He finds other ways to distort things. He finds other ways to put negativity into your presence so therefore you can't deal with the positiveness of what Christ our Lord is trying to do in your life. The Spirit is there to help, to overcome, to make plain everything that need, you need to know to move on, to live this Christian life. The Holy Spirit empowers us, gives us the boldness to be able to preach and teach and evangelize the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you're in your situation, the teaching moment, Philip jumped at the chance to declare Christ from the Scripture. He began with Isaiah 53, but went elsewhere in the Old Testament to proclaim Christ. He told the man, the, uh, the Ethiopian, the good news about Jesus. He gave him the gospel message. Jesus said the scriptures, they are which bear witness about him. Philip believed this and acted as if it were so. Often we debate over nine essential, inconsequential things questions and our doctrine, but we must take people to Christ as quickly as we can. You can't dilly-dally around. You must be able to go and talk to them and bring them to Christ as quickly as possible. Because as soon as they get it, it's just like the seed that was planted on the, on the, on the side of the sidewalk. It may have flourished, but it, it blows away. It's got to be in fertile soil. It's got to be in fertile soil. So get to Jesus quickly. Give him the gospel. Let him know what, he, what it's really all about. And then another point, the last point I want to bring, bring out to you. Dream about what might happen if you said yes. Now, I thought about this for a little while. And I said, you know what? Dream the dream. And then I said to myself, Philip is a fascinating character in this book. Especially when he considered the various way God has led him. He led him first as a, as a deacon when he was ministering to the widows back in chapter 6. 
when it wasn't being treated fairly. Then after that, because he missed, he used Paul, I and mean he saw at that time to persecute the church, it got the people moving and fleeing around so they could spread the gospel to other places, but they were all stuck in Jerusalem. Then on top of that, he sent them to Samaria where he started preaching, evangelizing, telling people of the goodness of the Lord, casting out demons, doing miracles, and performing signs and wonders. And, and through all of that, Samaria was changed and, and they were converted. Another point that I want to point out to you, when this movement was happening, even in Jerusalem, the disciples had to come up and check them out to see what was going on. Oh yes, Peter and John came up and they started uh, to lay hands on those, pray and lay hands on those that, that received the word. We understand that this evangelism was a mighty movement in Samaria, and all we have to do is understand that God was instrumental in putting Philip where he needed to be. But that's not it, though. See, Philip, even while he was doing very well there, even though he was led to, to Samaria by persecution, uh, he was led to go to Gaza by an angel. He was led to the Ethiopian's chariot by the Spirit. After this, the Spirit of the Lord carried him away. He found himself in uh, Azotus. He then passed through various towns preaching the gospel before entering Caesarea where he remained and lived out his life uh, for at least 20 years. Raised in a family with four beautiful daughters devoted to Christ. Uh, you'll find that story in Acts chapter 21. But none of this had been planned by Philip. When the Hellenist widows complained, they were neglected daily about the distribution in Acts chapter 6. The church decided to appoint seven men filled with the Holy Spirit and with good report for the task. They asked if Philip would help out. And Philip said, yes! He submitted himself to the task. And the rest is history. Philip went in for, uh, went in for it. And God explored, exploded in his life, in his beautiful life. What might happen if we had said yes to the Lord? When the Lord called us to evangelize, when the Lord called us to feed the hungry, when the Lord called us to, to visit the sick, when the Lord called us to go into the prisons and the highways and the byways, to be able to be there, to be a presence of His presence in the place of transitional problems. When difficult times come, where are you? Did you say yes when God called you to go into those places? He tasked you to go into a desert place. Did you say yes? Or you wanted to debate and think about where you wanted to go? Men, rise up. Take the authority. Do what God, because you God, God called you for such a time as this. He wants us to take a stand, to be the ones to be able to bring the gospel to, the, uh, to a dying world. Oh, Philip had uh, resumed his evangelistic ministry, uh, which uh, was in uh, Azotus, uh, north of Gaza, west of Jerusalem, near the coast. From there, he worked his way north along the coast of Caesarea. All this evangelist uh, could do well, as a follow-up for this eunuch was to commit the eunuch, this man uh, who was a convert, a new convert uh, to Christianity, to God and the Old Testament scripture. Yet, with the power of the Holy Spirit, this new disciple undoubtedly returns to Ethiopia, witnessing to all the saving grace. Oh, a witnessing of the saving grace. Let me say that again. Witnessing of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The things we can learn from Philip is that we will never see the power of God at work until we venture out in faith. Philip proclaimed the gospel trusted God to open hearts and godly men emboldened by God to do extraordinary things. He was one of those examples for us to follow. All we have to do is, as we decrease, let them increase. Let them have a body move in your life. It's not about the sports. It's not about the TV. It's not about coming. It's about you having a relationship with Christ Jesus. Pray, my brothers. Pray until something happens. Read your word. Read your word. And if you don't understand, Ask for the Spirit to move, to give you discernment over the Word. Ask for someone else to come in and help you discern over the Word of God. Be always ready to step in and help whenever you can. Be ready to step in and help whenever you can. God is looking for those who are willing to say yes to Him and do the work that He calls you to do.
evangelizing, making sure others know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Salvation is available to all. Man, let's take that time. You've been emboldened by God, filled with the Holy Spirit. Go out and do the work. Not everybody can be a preacher. Not everybody can be a graduate. Everybody can be a teacher. But everybody has a gift and the ability to be able to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ working in their life. You're a witness. Go out and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the word for the day. My brothers and sisters, be blessed and have a great day. Thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Pastor Robinson, for coming before uh, uh, and speaking this word. I, I'm encouraged to know that it's not over because we have been called for such a time as this. Sometimes it's a little difficult at times, and, and we still have to press on. Because as we press on, we'll find that God will never leave us nor forsake us. We're pressing on because the work needs to be done. We press on because he said he'll renew our strength as eagles. So therefore, we can never get weary in our well-doing. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank all this that we're doing in this ministry, in this church. Now, Lord, if there's somebody here, you know who they are. I don't know where they are, but you know where they are and who they are. If they heard the word today and, and was asking how they could be saved, how they can know that Jesus Christ in the pardoning of his sins, how do they want to know that this, this, this Jesus who was led to, to the slaughter like sheep, Jesus, the one who remained silent, the Jesus that went to the cross, they hung him high, they spread him wide. Oh, Lord, and then he died. They buried him and took all our sins away. But on the third day, he rose, and we are redeemed forever. Lord, anyone, whoever you are, if you heard a word today, please give us a call and let us know that you your life has been changed and that you're a new creature. You're under new management. To God be the glory for the great things he's doing. You have a great day. Amen.